you talk about the game being uh, accelerated at field level, and that's something I don't think many of us fans would, would, would know or experience. Um, and because it's faster than, than it, it appears, obviously the game, especially over 162 games, it requires a certain focus, a rare kind of focus versus other sports, I think, because it has that illusion of slow but doesn't pack fast. You must have come across players who had that razor focus, that were able to lock in, and those who drifted, and those who didn't quite have that focus, and maybe it was just a traipse in the meadows for them. Uh, can you think of examples of those two extremes? No, I can think of a hundred examples of those two extremes. I mean, you've all seen the kids that are playing baseball in the outfield. They're picking up daisies and picking weeds, and the game is too slow for them, and they're not paying attention. You mean at a little league level? In the yeah. little league level, yeah. 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 But, well, <laughs> there's some at a big league level that do it too. We have a, we've had a couple of those here lately. But when you talk about the guys that have the ability, and, and we use the phrase slow the game down all the time, where nothing gets them ahead of the situation. There's no panic in anything they do. My roommate was George Brett. He was my roommate in the minor leagues. He was my roommate in the major leagues. He was in my wedding. And he played the game as if he was 15 until he was 40. He had a genuine joy for the game. He loved the game. He loved the challenge. He had a tremendous competitive instinct. But it was fun for him. Robin Young in Milwaukee was my teammate. Paul Molitor was my teammate in Milwaukee. And those guys just played the game because they loved the game. And they, they had such a great understanding of the game. And, and George was so intense and there were so many things that he could do that nobody else could do. Years ago, when we all learned the game and we would sit around the locker room and have a few beers after the game, we'd sit in the locker room in our uniforms for two hours after the game and talk with Hal McRae and Lou Pinella and George Brett and Charlie Lau and Whitey Herzog and just talk about the game. And George would hit, get three or four hits that night and nobody else get any. And so how come you got hits and we don't? He said, well, if you see this guy's hand, when he turns his hand like this, I know it's a fastball, but if it's like this a little bit, it's a breaking ball, and I can see that. And they're going, yeah, right. <laughs> Nobody else can see that. Right. But you're right. It is a focus. Um, a lot of God-given ability physically and the appreciation and the joy to make sure that you don't get overwhelmed by the situation. And you see guys like Bautista. I mean, he's not had a good year. You couldn't see anything in that ballpark yesterday. The shadows were halfway out to the mound. It was dark, bright contrast. The guy's throwing 99 miles an hour. Eddie struck out before him, and he had no chance. He couldn't see anything, and he was shaking his head like, I can't see anything. And Bautista hits a home run to tie it up, just because it wasn't a big deal to him. He was just playing baseball, and he was able to come through and come with that dramatic hit again. But yeah, there. You know, and, and we see, like I said, there's eight, been 18,000 people that have played the game. Everybody that gets to major leagues is blessed with great talent. What separates the stars from the journeyman players, their ability to focus, to take every game the same way. Derek Jeter does it. Mookie Betts does it. Xander Bogarts does it. Every single day is the same. And they're going to give you everything they have. And it sounds cliche, but when you go watch those guys play, you're going to get the best they have every day. And that's what George Brett's motto was in his career. At the end of his career, someone asked him, how do you want to be remembered? He said, I want to be at the ballpark, a dad with his 10-year-old kid, take my last at bat, hit a one-hopper to the second baseman, be out by a half a step, and have the dad say, that's the same way you started. Just do things consistently. Yeah, it calls to mind the Joe DiMaggio line about, uh, you know, he's in his later days and he dove for a ball in center field. And they asked the coach, their manager asked him why he dove for the ball. And he says, because there's a chance out there in that stadium, somebody has, has never seen me play before, right? So.